Hello, men of God. I don't know how hard it was for you, but the news that we heard from Father John Jenkins that we are hitting a pause button and going online, that really hit me. There was a part of me that said, yeah, we didn't come back so that we could have classes online. I felt some frustration and disappointment, even some disillusion. Then there was a little ray of hope. We are not going home now. We are given an opportunity, and that opportunity will definitely require sacrifice, but we are given an opportunity. Before saying anything more, I want to be very honest and transparent, and be as honest and transparent with you as possible. I heard the news about hitting the pause about 4.30 today when the rectors and were invited to a Zoom meeting that started roughly a half hour before Father John's address. That did not give me much time to process what we heard, what we were told, and we were told of some of the changes that were coming, but it was still a shock, even as I saw the numbers. I also want to be completely honest that yesterday, I felt terrible. I spent much of the day yesterday having one-on-one -on -one meetings with different first-year sentinels, their new residents of Dunn, and I plan to continue having those meetings. I want to be able to meet with everyone, especially the first-year students and, and the new residents of Dunn. But during one of those meetings, one of our young men asked me, do I know of any COVID cases in the hall? And I told him, I don't know of any positive cases. I do know of somebody who had gone for testing and that test was negative, but he was still in quarantine waiting for a second negative test, as is our protocol here at Notre Dame. It was true what I said, but I felt terrible as a half hour later I received a test message saying that somebody in Dunn had tested positive. I honestly wish I had known earlier. I honestly wish I was able to say that to him earlier, to allay his fears even though we now have a positive case. Right now I know of three people from Dunn who have tested positive for COVID. They are all in isolation, and I know that some of you were in a virtual meeting with them as they are all part of Hall government and they identified themselves as people in isolation because of COVID. I also know that there are other Dunn residents who have been identified as close contacts and have been asked to go for testing. The virus is real. The virus has hit our home. As far as I know, the close contacts to the men who tested positive are being contacted and informed on what they need to do to make sure that in case they have been exposed, they don't pass it on to anyone else. But the only way to keep everybody safe, the only way to keep everybody healthy, is to follow the guidelines that we are given. I do not want to think about us possibly having to go home, but along the same lines, if that is going to be on the horizon, the only way that we can make sure that our family members are safe is if we follow the guidelines that are given. The restrictions are going to be difficult to live with for these next couple of weeks. Wearing a mask when alone in a study room may seem and feel strange. It may seem and feel like overkill. It seems strange to me wearing a mask alone in the Dunn Hall Chapel, but it is what we need to do. Wear the mask. When you leave the study room or lounge or wherever you are, use the bottle of disinfectant. Not being able to visit your neighbor in, your, in the room right next to you has already been offered, 
already been an adjustment, that's going to continue. It's extremely hard to form community when you can't simply stop in and say hello to the person next to you. Not being able to welcome guests at all into Dunn Hall is going to be a huge sacrifice. It stinks. I know that many people have significant others and very close friends who live in other dorms and other parts of campus. For those of us, or for those people who are part of a team or part of a club that usually meets on campus, you're used to being together with your friends, you're used to meeting outside of team practice or your club gathering and hanging out on a regular basis, even in our own dorms. That can be a beautiful thing, but it is something that we cannot do now. The fact that we cannot gather in our halls with those friends who live somewhere else, and that we have to limit gatherings to 10 people or less, that is going to suck. Virtual programming and virtual getting together is not the same as getting together in person. It is a sacrifice. And as I thought about all of this, a saying came to me. It is not what you have done, or what in the eyes of the world or in the eyes of others you have accomplished that makes you great. What makes you great is what you are willing to sacrifice. It is not what others see you accomplish, or not what you have done and achieved that makes you great. Greatness comes from the willingness to sacrifice. As a child, I had dreams of becoming a professional athlete. I didn't know enough about genetics at the time to realize that my genes really are not the most advantageous to become a professional basketball player or a professional football player, etc. That's okay. I would still practice tossing the football around and practice shooting the basketball in the hoop that was in the front yard, you know, on, on the street. And, and, and my dad saw those dreams. He did not discourage me. Instead, my dad took me aside one day and tried to instill some wisdom into me. My dad said to me, Eric, you see the famous athlete and you see what they are doing, and you hear the roar of the crowds, and that can be exhilarating, and that can be great. But what you don't see is the hours and hours of practice with nobody watching, nobody cheering. It's not just athletes that have to practice. I have been blessed to see and to hear some incredible music from men in Dunn Hall. In order to be that good in music, whether it be with an instrument or with your voice, honing those skills requires sacrifice, lots and lots of practice. Sacrifice is required within academics. I believe it is Thomas Edison who said that genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. What we aim to do here at Notre Dame is we aim to do something great. We aim to study together in person in a time of pandemic. True greatness is not measured by what is achieved by what, what we are willing to sacrifice. And I say that in front of the greatest man who ever lived, Jesus present in the tabernacle. We see his image on the cross. Jesus sacrificed everything to become human, and even as human, sacrificed everything, offering his very life for us. These next couple of weeks of lockdown, per se, and online classes, they're going to be difficult. 
There's absolutely no sugar coating that. And there will be more disappointments. We're going to see more cases of COVID. Because just because we are getting more strict in who we see and how we are together and enforcing the guidelines even more, the, the, the virus is not going to say, you know, if, if the virus is in somebody, you know, and the virus does have an incubation period, the virus is not going to say, oh wow, this person started self-isolating, I guess I'm going to stop being a virus. No, that, that doesn't happen. We will see some more positive cases. Hopefully not here and done. As contact tracers continue doing their jobs, more people will go into quarantine many as a precaution. Keep your eye on the ball. Wear the mask. Wash your hands. Be honest with the daily health check and follow the guidelines when you're honest with the daily health check. And maintain physical distance. Not social distance physical distance. Keep an eye out for your brother who lives next door or who lives down the hall. That's what I mean by that. Stay connected with each other. Stay connected with the people that you love across campus, even if it is at a physical distance. These are going to be stressful weeks. Keep an eye out for each other. If you are feeling up, maybe share a joke, maybe share a positive story, keep an eye out for each other because these are going to be days which are going to be stressful and want to push us down. We need to keep lifting each other up. As Don Hall, we are sentinels. Keep watch. If you notice somebody needing help, raise the alarm. Raise the alarm with those who can help. As the Don Hall motto says, we need to have the competence to see and the courage to act. We are men who can do that. We can get through this because we can get through this together. Physically distant, but still united. Don Hall sentence. Great in our willingness to sacrifice, not just for ourselves, but to sacrifice for others. Sacrificing so that we, as the Fighting Irish, can be here together.